Calvary Chapel, you can have a seat. Listen, I've been practicing this all of about 30 minutes. Let me see if I can do this right. Feliz Año Nuevo. Did I do that? All right. How about that, guys? Woo! New year, new me in 2023. It's going to be great. Hey, my name is Jimmy Purchase. I serve on our group team. If we haven't had the chance to meet, today is going to be a special day. If this is your first time at Calvary, we're just so glad that you're here. And let me tell you, you picked a great Sunday to worship with us today because today is a different type of service. We're, we wanted to take the, the, last, the last day of the year and the first day of the year to look back at what God has done in 2022. We wanted to look back at how he's worked through our church, what he's done in our midst, what he's done in your life, uh, to celebrate what he could do in the future. We get this from the Psalms. Uh, in the book of Psalms, the authors of the psalmist, they, they look back at the history of God's people uh, to look back on the way God's worked all throughout their history. And the psalmist does that for one purpose, to get their hearts ready for what God could do in the future. And that's what we're going to do this morning. It's gonna be a powerful time. We're going to sing songs that were anthems of our worship all throughout 2022. We're going to explore themes that we talked about all throughout 2022. We're gonna hear stories of God's power, some stories that we shared earlier this year. It is going to be a powerful 
time. And we're so glad you're here. Our pastor, Pastor Doug, has got a New Year's message he wants to share with you. Turn your attention to the screens. Hey, Calvary, can you believe we're welcoming in 2023? For some of you, that's good news. Because if you're being honest, this past year wasn't all that great. And you're so glad to leave it behind. For others of you, you might be on top of the world right now or somewhere in between. Either way, we learned from the book of Philippians this past year that whatever happens, we can find peace and joy in the fact that God is near us in every circumstance of life. Personally, my, my family just celebrated our son Caden's wedding, so 2022 has definitely ended on a high note. At the same time, this past year has also brought challenges and opportunities to trust God at his word. We've experienced some unexpected setbacks. We've experienced spiritual attacks. We've experienced economic pressure. We've experienced prayers that God didn't answer and prayers that he answered above and beyond. And in all of those things, we know that God is at work. Jesus would say to those who asked him, hey, my father, he's always at work, and I too am at work to this very moment. So in the highs and the lows, well, I heard it said this way, that if God makes your cup sweet, that you drink it with joy. And if he makes your cup bitter, that you drink it in fellowship with him. Either way, it's with him. And so here at Calvary, we're gonna celebrate some of those sweet moments, some amazing moments of 2022, hundreds of salvations and baptisms, the, the launch of our Calvary Chapel Espanol campus locally, two Compassion International sites in Central America. At the same time, some of those low moments, the tragedy of a hurricane that strikes the southwest coast of Florida, a war that breaks out in Ukraine. And yet even in those calamities, God was on the move, providing the means to lift our Florida neighbors out of the rubble and provide shelter and hope for displaced women and children fleeing Ukraine. So as we stand here, straddling the old and the new year, let's all take a deep breath and recognize that whatever has happened, whatever lies ahead, God is with us and he is for us. And as Philippians 1, 6 says, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So church, we're praying for you. We love you. And we can't wait to see what God has in store for us next. Happy New Year, Calvary.
family. So that was our anthem for last year because it reminds us of the gospel, the fact that we're taken out of Egypt and brought into freedom. That's the truth of our lives. And because of Christ, we're raised from the dead with him and no longer slaves to our sins, but we can step into freedom with him. Amen. Come on, just give him a shout of praise today.
Amen. Amen. You can have a seat. You know, one of the reasons we can raise a hallelujah and heaven fights for us, one of the reasons why the Lord responds when his people pray and worship is because our God is a God of victory. He, isn't that good news today? Isn't that a good way to start the new year? Our God is a God of victory. Wanting to give victory and freedom to his people, so much so that the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians that out of God's love and mercy, Jesus himself, the victory he wins by his death and resurrection, the victory that's his, he gives to us so that we can live a victorious life, a life of freedom. And we explored that theme all throughout 2022 as we journeyed through the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, we followed the story of Israel as God saved them from oppression and freed them to new life in the promised land. New life in the promised land. And we put ourselves in their shoes for a number of weeks and journeyed with their story and found our story in their story. One of my favorite sayings throughout the whole series, as Pastor Doug said this numerous times, he said, the thing about Israel is that they were saved, but they weren't totally free. Isn't that true for us? Isn't that your story? I know that's my story. I might be saved, but there are some things that I'm just not free from just yet. And that's probably true for you as well. Take a look at the video behind me. The story of Exodus is the story of us. We long to be free, to run without anything holding us back, to find what dreams have been lost, to no longer be bound to the things that have left us wandering in the desert, hoping for more. We wonder, what will it take to experience a life beyond our chains? Where will our deliverance come from? It comes when we learn to pay attention, when we start to recognize his work in our story, when we purpose not to miss the moments that help us find our way back to a place of purpose, freedom. It comes when his commandments are not just written on stone, but written on our hearts. When we understand his ways, we understand who we are. It comes when we can see something extraordinary in the ordinary and hear a holy God call us by name. It comes when we learn to listen when he tells us that the dream of freedom is just getting started. You see, it's in God's nature to surprise his people in the desert. He loves to make a way through the impossible places because in the middle of our greatest fears and failures, we will encounter an ever-present God, a great provider and redeemer. Our deliverance will only come through him. Freedom. It comes when we realize everything he does points ahead to a greater promise and a way to experience a relationship with him. When we learn to spend time in his presence, and the fabric of our relationship grows deeper through the patterns he gives us, weaved together to withstand future trials and strong enough to pass on to every future generation. This is no fleeting moment, a temporary gift that could be taken away. No, this freedom is forever in his presence. This is the story of Exodus. This is the story of us. And this is our freedom story. Amen, amen. Happy New Year. Good morning, my name is Paul. And uh, yeah, you can clap, this is a new year. I am the uh, pastor of ministries here at the main campus and I get the great fortune to work with our worship teams and um, our missions department and outreach department and so many of our great volunteers. Uh, but this morning, we've got somebody really special with us on keys, Scotty Bemis. Scotty's with us every week, but you know what, he is awesome. He's one of the greatest musicians I've ever met. And this past year was, uh, it was a special year for him, right? He got married. So, 
You may recognize Gabby. Gabby was up here, uh, part of our worship team this morning. And uh, what you may not know about them, but about so many of our volunteers, is that faithfully they give hours and hours and hours uh, to serve the Lord. God uses their gifts. And uh, for many of them, they never get paid, so <laughs> praise God for them. The Exodus story was a beautiful story of God's redemption, God's provision. It was a love story. His people, the people of Egypt, or the people of Israel were, were held in bondage and in tyranny by, by Pharaoh in, in a country of Egypt. They were held in captivity, but God promised them to deliver them to a place of milk and honey. He promised them provision. He promised them to the purpose of being in relationship with him. He, see, he wanted them to have that freedom to, to worship him freely. And he wanted them to be a light unto the nations. This morning you received a card, and if you didn't, our ushers are gonna come through, and they're gonna hand you one. And if you need a pencil, uh, ask them for a pencil, but um, here's what we'd love for you to do. Just take a couple moments. We'd love for you to think about what is it that I'm freed from, and what is it I'm freed to? And then the freed from, maybe go back to that moment of salvation, that moment where you received Christ. And write down, what was it specifically that he freed you from? Maybe it was relationships. Maybe it was addiction, pride, greed. Whatever it is, we, we all came from a place of brokenness. And he saved us and he's using our gifts. He's using, he's shaped us in a very unique way. He is, he's given us spiritual gifts. He's given us a heart to feel certain ways. He's given us abilities, and he's given us a unique personality, and he's given us our experiences, and he uses all of those things in a beautiful way for ministry. And it's a lot of times out of the brokenness of those experiences, some of those most painful times, that God bursts a new ministry. In just a few moments, we're gonna see a video about a gentleman named Charles Booker. Charles is a servant here at this campus, and God used his brokenness to bring about love and compassion to others. So as you reflect on this, I'm gonna reflect on it, and I'll come back up in just a moment. we see throughout the Bible that God gives us seven different types of covenants. Covenants that we would call our conditional covenants. These are covenants that he made with man that if they would do something, that he would fulfill promises to them. It's like this, imagine that I had a mansion. Now, I don't have a mansion, but imagine that I did. And imagine that you wanted to purchase it. And so we came up with an agreement, you sent me money, we filled out a contract and I gave you the deed to that. That's the equivalent to a conditional covenant. And, and a part of this conditional covenant that he made with man was that every time that they sacri that every time that they sinned, that they would have to give a blood sacrifice. Now, there were a few dif difficulties with this conditional covenant. Number one, the further the, the nation of Israel got away from that point of being in bondage, they forgot how faithful and how good was to them. You know, I know that happens in my life sometimes. There are moments where 
God has answered a prayer. He's given me a provision that maybe I didn't even ask for. But then the very next day, what happens? Sometimes I forget. And the nation of Israel did that time after time after time. The other, the other uh, issue with this conditional covenant was that God wanted their very best. You see, when they gave sacrifices, when they gave these blood sacrifices, God required them to give of animals that were unblemished, animals that were not sick. And what did they end up doing? They did just the opposite. In fact, we read in the book of Malachi, the last book in the Old Testament, where God was bringing judgment against, God, against his people, but also his priests, because the people, well, they were taking shortcuts. They weren't giving their best. They were giving animals that were sick. They were giving animals that were blemished. They were giving animals that were blind. But more than that, the priests accepted it, and he allowed that to be placed upon the altar. The other thing that, that was a problem in this, in this covenant for them was that they were only being forgiven for the sins of their past. Think about it, every time you would sin, you would have to make another blood sacrifice. For the priest, the job was horrible. For the priest, it was every morning they would have to get up and kill a bull for their, for their sins. And then they would have to take the carcass and the blood, or they would take the carcass in the skin and they would have to take it outside the city walls and they would have to make then another sacrifice for that because they had touched blood. And it was just this ongoing repetitive thing where, where they could just never catch up. You see, they were, they were forgiven for the sins of the past but not for the sins of today or the sins of tomorrow. The people needed an unconditional covenant. They needed a covenant that well, that they could not pay for or they could earn. Remember the illustration of my house? Well, I wish, the mansion. Imagine this, imagine if I was gonna give it to you. And if I came to you and I said, listen, there's nothing you can do to earn this. You can't pay for it. There's absolutely nothing you can do, but I'm giving you the deed to this, why? Because I love you. That's exactly the picture of grace and of love that God gave us. Because you know what? He did give his best to us. He gave his only son, Jesus, to be our sacrifice. We couldn't earn it, we couldn't pay for it, we couldn't be kind enough. I couldn't give enough money away to earn it. It was simply because God loved me, and he gave his best. Hebrews chapter 10 talks a lot about this. It talks about how the Old Testament and, and how these laws were were just a, a mirror for us to see our brokenness. And that how, how God had to prepare a way and he had to send his son to be the perfect sacrifice. In fact, if you'll read with me Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 and 18, he says this. This is the covenant I will make with them. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Their sins and lawless acts, I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. He offered his best. And, and reflect with me, if you would, that moment when Jesus went to his friends in the upper room. There they were gonna celebrate a Passover meal, a meal that they had celebrated with, with their families for years and their families before that, and their families before that. And in that moment, here he was saying, Not, no longer am I just your rabbi, but I am now becoming your sacrifice. And little did they know that in just a few moments that one of their own was gonna betray him. Little did they know that Jesus in just a, another, in a few hours, was gonna be imprisoned. And he was gonna be beaten and scourged. He was gonna be nailed to a Roman cross with Roman nails for our sins, for the perfect sacrifice. He faced a lonely death there on Golgotha. And then he was buried at a borrowed tomb. But praise God, he 
He was resurrected. And not only do we share in the victory at Calvary, but we share in that power of the resurrection. That resurrection power isn't just for tomorrow, it's not just for eternity, but it's for today. So this morning, as we enter into this new year, we're gonna break bread, we're gonna drink from the cup, but before we do that, I want you to reflect on God's sacrifice for you. For you, not just for me, but for you. So take a moment, I'll come back up, we're gonna pray, and then I'll lead us in the Lord's Supper. Father, we are so grateful for your son who paid the ultimate price. Father, that, that we might have a relationship with you, that we might have victory over sin, that we might walk in freedom and in forgiveness. Father, we're reminded of the words of John the Baptist who said, behold, the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sin of the world. Father, we thank you for taking away our sin. We thank you for cleansing us. We thank you for the sacrifice at Golgotha. God, let our lives never be the same. Father, allow us to live. Father, teach us to live in that power of the resurrection every day. So Father, we thank you for the, these communion elements. We thank you for this communion table that you've set before us. And Father, we don't go into it lightly, but Father, we go into it with a heart of gratitude. So Father, we say thank you. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus met with his disciples and he prayed over the meal and he took the bread and he said, every time that you eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. And in the same fashion, he took the cup. He said, this is the, the new covenant. This is my blood that I freely give for you. Every time you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Our new covenant birthright is to stand in the freedom of Christ that he has set us free in. And as I mentioned, we have one of our own that we're gonna watch, Charles Booker. And we're gonna get to see his story and how he's living in the resurrection today and how he's been freed. Watch with me. I remember the day very well. We're at the beach, me, my brother, my father and my mother. They had a little inflatable shamu. I remember walking back to the car and we were held up at gunpoint by two armed men. My family at that time decided that they wanted a better life for us. So they packed us up and we moved to America to start a new life. Things were definitely different here. We came from this little island of Jamaica and now we're in the big city. And this cars, people are moving. The pace was really fast. I didn't think we fit in. I certainly didn't feel like I fit in here.
When I was 13 years old, I find friends that are using drugs and alcohol. Me and a friend got in some trouble at school. We lit a small trash can on fire, but it spiraled out of control really, really fast. And me and my friend were both arrested for first degree arson. About a week later, my best friend ended up taking his life and I was traumatized. Instead of turning away from drugs and alcohol, I dove right in. My drug use led me down a bad road. I was incarcerated numerous times. Consequentially, I find myself homeless. I had become that guy, the guy that you see out front of 7-Eleven. I was eating out of 7-Eleven garbage cans. I was drinking out of discarded beer bottles. My drug and alcohol abuse had stolen my life from me. I just simply wanted it all to end. I just wanted to die. I remember screaming out, Lord, if you're there and you love me as you say you do, fix me or take me, but don't leave me here like this. They heard my prayer that night. He delivered me right back to the Conti jail. I was privileged to run into men from Calvary Chapel's prison ministry, and boy, was it ever life-changing. I met men with hope, and they put Christ at the center. I got out of jail, and I started attending Calvary Chapel. I run into some of the very men that used to minister to me. They started to walk me through what discipleship looks like. They taught me how to read scriptures. They paved the way to to who I am today in Christ, and I couldn't do it without the support of men like this. Today, I go back to the jails almost each and every week with Calvary Chapel through the front doors without handcuffs on, and I don't stick around for lunch. And I get to mentor men and invite them to know the same Lord that saved my life. I remember a day when I ran into a man that I used to run with on the streets this man walked up to me, he's like, Charles, I know that's you. He's like, but something is different. I told him that a relationship with Jesus really has changed everything in my life, and he can change you too. Hey guys, my name is uh, Sean Fryer. I'm one of our youth pastors, and one of the things I love about Charles' story is, even though our stories are different, and I'm sure for most of you in the room, your story is different than his, we serve the same God, and we believe in the same God, and the same Jesus died for us and rose from us, and even though our stories are different, we can find similarities in those stories. I'm sure in the past year, some of you have been through a lot of highs, some of you have been through a lot of lows, some of you probably had more lows than highs, some of you maybe had more highs than lows, it's, it's a roller coaster, right? Uh, for my wife and I, uh, it was one of the best moments of our lives in August. We welcomed our first child into the world, uh, little Theodore. Um, that's the cutest kid you've ever seen, right? Just say yes. You don't have to believe it. Just say yes. <laughs> you guys know my wife, Megan. She's on, she serves on the worship team here. But right after the birth of our son, one of the, the best moments, one of the highest moments of our life, uh, we went through a very, very hard month. Uh, about a week or two after his birth, my wife ended up in urgent care. She, she had a sickness, and then I had to take my mother-in-law to the ER. She was having issues. She flew down from Colorado to help take care of us after our son was born, Then I'm having to take her to the ER. And, and then shortly after that, I found myself in the ER. It was, it was crazy. It's like, what is going on here? This is supposed to be an amazing season. And, and then about a month after our son was born, we actually had to take our dog and we had to, to put our dog down. And if anyone in here is an animal person or a dog person, any dog people in the house, dog people, you know how hard this is. Gizmo, my best friend, right? Any, any cat people in the house? All right, we'll be praying for you. <laughs> we'll have uh, some prayer counselors up front here. Uh, we'll pass out some more communion if you wanna reflect, repent a little longer. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, but if, if you have an animal, you know, they're family. They're family, and Gizmo is truly man's best friend. He, he was my best friend. 
And, and I found myself in God's word a, a day or two after, after we put Gizmo down, and, and then I'm holding my son Theodore a little bit after that, and I'm just talking to him, and I'm having a conversation with him, and I'm looking in his eyes, and I just say, Theodore, I'm, I'm like, Daddy's really sad. I'm like, Daddy lost his best friend. And, and I'm literally, I'm sitting in this moment, and I'm just mourning, and I'm hurting. But then I look at my son, and I say, but you know what? I need a new best friend. And I say, Theodore, do you wanna be my best friend? And he gave me the biggest smile that you've ever seen. And it just melted my heart. And what's crazy is in that moment, in one of my lowest lows of the year, I, I had one of my highest highs, and God brought me back to what I had read earlier that day. It's John 1, it's verse 49. He's calling Nathaniel, Jesus is, to be a disciple. And it says, then Nathaniel declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you, I saw you under the fig tree. And then he says this, you will see greater things than that. He then added, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Listen to what Jesus says. You will see greater things than that. I lost my best friend, but I gained the greatest blessing I've ever experienced. And I want you guys to know and hear and understand that no matter what low lows you've experienced or high highs, know this, Jesus has better. And Jesus has more and Jesus has greater, and you can take the greatest moment you've had, the greatest moment of freedom you've had in him, whatever it is, and know he has more than you could ever hope, dream, or imagine. He's got even better. You know, back in, in September, we had a vision weekend, and we asked this question, how far will it go? And what I love, love, love about our God is that that is a huge question. Because you see, the story doesn't end in Exodus, like we read earlier this year. It doesn't end with Christmas, with the birth of our Savior. It doesn't end on Good Friday with the cross. It doesn't even end on Easter with the resurrection. It doesn't end with the ascension, because here's the thing, he's coming back, and he's gonna return, and he's gonna establish his kingdom here on earth, and he's gonna wipe away every tear from our eyes. There's gonna be no more sorrow, no more crying, no more sickness. It's gonna be the greatest thing that we have ever experienced, more than we could even imagine. And that's his promise to us. And, and, and here's what I love, though, is what I find is when he does a work in your life and you get to experience these moments with him, it's rarely for yourself. How far will it go? I, I wanna proclaim this message to as many people as I possibly can. It's not just for me. It's, it's for the next generation. It's for my friends. It's for my basketball buddies. It's, it's for whoever. There's a reason every single night before my wife and I put our son to sleep, we pray over him because we want him to experience what we've experienced in Christ, All right? There's a reason in student ministry that I do what I do in youth ministry, it's seeing the next generation falling in love with Jesus, giving their lives to him, engaging in scripture, serving all over our church. It's not just a message for me, but it's a message for me to share with as many people as I can, and it's the same for you. It's a message, how far will it go? And he's got so much more for us, so much better for us, and not just for you, but everyone around you. And he's entrusted you with that gift, he's entrusted you with that message. So I'm gonna proclaim it, and I hope you guys will proclaim it too. In a second, we're gonna watch a video of, of Laura, of Tex, of Linda, and we're gonna see an amazing work Jesus did in their lives, but here's what's crazier, even though the their stories end in the video, and, and even though the video has an end time, we know God's gonna do even more than he's already done in their lives, because that's who our Jesus is. He's gonna complete the good work that he started in us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's watch this video. When I was four, my parents told us, me and my brothers, that they were getting a divorce. They got remarried, but then divorced again quickly two years later. While my dad did all that he could do to provide for us, I did feel this deep void. I believed what the world was telling me about Jesus. I really believed there was a God, but I doubted that Jesus was actually good. Growing up with nine siblings and a father who had a drug addiction problem, I had dreams and aspirations in my life that I had no idea how I was gonna get to having my own family, um, being my own man, 
and I just felt trapped in a scenario that I did not know a way out of. So there was a season of loss that I said goodbye to my mom, but then it went on to my niece and my sister and my brother-in-law and my brother and my nephew. I, the grief was overwhelming. I felt like I couldn't get up. So here I am, I'm 19, and I have this friend, and he invites me to this young adult group that gets together on Sunday nights. And I just could sense there was something different. Fast forward a couple more years, I landed myself in foster care with my seven siblings. Uh, I aged out of foster care. I was still lost until I came across an organization called Poor Kids of South Florida. And that's really when my journey of freedom began. I knew that if I held on to it, self-pity would take over. And in that despair, God gave me a rope of hope. It was at Four Kids when I gave my life to Christ, and that's when Christ began to develop me into the man that I dreamt to be. I actually started to dream again and be excited about what could be next. Before, that wasn't, that was not even a thing for me. And I remember there was this night of worship they were having. And there was a song, and the bridge of the song said, wonderful, beautiful, matchless in every way. And it was like in that moment, I thought, okay, Jesus, if nothing compares to you, if you are all of these things and not what the world told me, if you have purpose for my life, if you are loving, if you are kind, if you wanna take away this shame and this, these things from my past that I tried to fill this void with and you wanna make me new and you wanna make me whole and you want me to walk with you, I will and I give my life to you. And it felt like all of those doubts just washed away. In those hospital rooms, my sister's last words were Jesus, Jesus. My brother who said, thank you for never giving up on me. You kept telling me about Jesus. As believers, we have this power of the resurrection. We know that God's promises for eternal life are true. We can say goodbye and still have that hope to hold on to. And that is what I use to encourage others that are walking through a valley. Fast forward a couple years, I'm married, I have a son. I can say now, being a foster parent of five kids, that I have never experienced as much joy in my life. I'm making a difference in kids' lives that will spread over generations. I now have the joy and the honor to speak to our young adults, that they don't have to hear what the world tells them. They have to hear for themselves to get to know Jesus personally because he changes everything.
Amen, church. How many of you believe our God is a God of breakthrough, that he has miracle power? Isn't that good news? Isn't that a great way to worship in the new year? Come on. Listen, I just want to say real quick, I know we've got some people in the room. This might be your first time ever at church. Maybe you woke up this morning and you're like, I want to start my new year off right. I'm going to get to church. And maybe today was the first time you've ever heard of a God of victory. Maybe today is the first time you ever took communion. You heard about Jesus and out of his love, he, he bore your sin and shame on a cross, died, and three days later rose again in victory. And if that's you today, and you wanna make a decision to follow him, or maybe you just have questions. Who is this Jesus? What does, it, what does it mean to give my life to him? In just a few moments, we'll have some prayer partners down here at the front, and they would love to hear your story and pray for you and share with you what it means to follow Jesus because everybody in this room can tell you that's the most important decision that you will ever make. You need a whole room of people that would love to celebrate that with you. So don't leave. If that's you today, don't leave without praying with one of our prayer counselors down here at the front. Now, real quick, before we go, one of the reasons we wanted to look back at what God did in 2022 was to prepare our hearts for what he could do in the future. And I'm excited to share with you a word that we feel like the Lord gave us uh, that's going to define the spiritual landscape of our church next year. Ready for it? Are you ready? It's the word freedom. It's the word freedom. Now, what if, yeah, what if, 2023 was a year you learned some spiritual disciplines that transformed your walk with Jesus. What if you loosened up the grip of control and lived your life open-handedly? What if next year you forgave that one person, that one person, who that wound you've been carrying all throughout 2022? What if 2023 was a year that wound 
became a scar that told a gospel story. What if, what if you stopped drowning in shame and guilt and cling to a life of victory freely given to you through Jesus? We believe that can happen for you starting next week. Next week, Pastor Doug kicks off a brand new series called Freedom. And let me tell you what, this week and the coming weeks are the perfect opportunity to invite someone to sit next to you at church, the perfect time. Because it could be their year breakthrough also. So who's that person that God's put on your heart? Is it a family member? Is it your spouse? Is it your neighbor? Be bold and invite. And maybe 2023 could be their year of victory and their year of freedom. Let's do everything we can to see our friends, our family, and our neighbors follow Jesus in 2023. That starts next week. Yeah. So before you go, I just wanna speak a benediction, a blessing over you as you go and enjoy a wonderful new year. So just receive this from 1 Thessalonians. It says, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, body, and soul be kept blameless before the coming of our Lord Jesus. For he who calls you is faithful and he will surely do it. God bless you, Calvary Chapel. Have a happy new year. And if you're here for prayer, we'll have some prayer partners down here at the front. We'll see you next week. Bring a friend.